Hi everyone. This week has been kind of uh, busy for me. Uh, as you can see on the bench, I got three pieces here I've been working on this weekend. I work on one for a while and work on another one. And uh, yeah, that's still the same SB36 I've had for a while. And just about there, but not quite. A friend of mine had a uh, has a Swan 700 CX. He was talking on it and uh, noticed there was some issues on the transmitter side, so I tore it apart, looked at it right quick, and uh, found some bias issues with it. But uh, I tell you guys, it's, uh, I mean, today the uh, heat index is 110. Uh, last time I checked the temperature today, it was 99. And this whole week has been extremely hot. We've had no rain now and quite a while grass is all but <laughs> all but dead <laughs> but uh yeah it's been been real tough so that's why you're hearing the i'm having to run the air conditioner out here in the shop i'm running the one that's way back here behind me instead of the one up here next to me so uh the noise won't be just so loud but hey i gotta have air conditioning in here because it is uh it's hot out but anyway um uh, i wanted to uh do the part two on the Gazoo 101 EE and uh, you know we had a problem with the transformer running hot in the uh, first video if you haven't seen that video I'll link it down below in the description box but uh, we found out you know that was a capacitor on the uh, regulator board that was causing the transformer to run hot and putting noise in the receiver so we got that squared away and I found there's an issue with the transmitter when you can't get the bias up and uh, when you go to try to even tune it, the uh, power just falls right off as you're tuning it. So uh, I think I know what that problem is, and we'll get to it in this video. But first, we'll look at the schematic for that thing, and I'll show you what I'm thinking. So again, guys, you know, in our last video, we noticed that the 160-volt uh, line was uh, completely down. And we can see it coming out here out of the uh, rectifier board. And it comes over. And comes down here to the regulator board on pin 6. And here was those two capacitors. I think it was uh, C7 and uh, C8. And one of those capacitors was shorted so we replaced it. Well, that took the uh, care of the 160 volt line for receive, but we still had a problem, and uh, I, I know I didn't show it, but we was only working on the uh, the transformer overheating problem in the last video. So if we look right here, we see 160 volts coming off that line with an arrow. When we follow it up to up here by the PA compartment and you see it goes through an inductor and there's a um, resistor coming off of it and it comes on up and it goes through this R14 which is a 100 dome resistor and then into the grid of the tubes. If that 160 volts is not making it up here, you're going to have very, very little uh, bias current. In other words, uh, you're not going to be able to get much uh, stability in the twos when you try to uh, tune it because it's going to just be up and down because there's nothing controlling this this screen up here um, in the uh, 6JS6C tubes. So I'm thinking our problem has to lie somewhere in this area right here. So if you look at the S meter, I got the uh, meter on IC and we should be able to read the uh, bias current. But you see it just moves a little bit and cannot adjust it no further than that. So something's going on there. If 
also when we look at the watt meter we'll put it in tune position I'll go to marks you can see it come up now you saw it go up to about 40 watts now it's slowly dropping down now see it's coming back up so yeah there's something going on there so guys after trying the uh, transmitter out you see that there was no grid current uh, we're not able to adjust it up and I even you know I swapped the uh, regulator board out the PB 1314A to a different board just to see if there was still a problem with it and it didn't make a difference so uh, you know I, I measured our voltages down here that was fine so I decided to get up here and take a closer look and I didn't see this initially but here you can see that uh, 100 ohm resistor that goes to pin 3 and 6 of the tubes that 100 ohm resistor right there I can look at it along this end it is cracked so that's probably where our problem is so guys yep that was it uh, you can see where the 160 comes up and that 100 ohm resistor that I mentioned right here that was the culprit that's what caused the problem of not getting uh, any bias current and uh, being able to tune the transmitter with that replaced now and it's working fine Alright guys, that's what's left of that 100 ohm resistor for the uh, bias and you see it was completely uh, broken the other side was gone I have not found it and this side was at the top I could see a little crack in the end of it but you know I couldn't see the other side and when I went to desolder it it just fell right in two so I went ahead and replaced it so let's see if now if we got any bias current I went ahead and put the uh, original regulator board back in the one that we put the caps in in the uh, last video okay we've got an upper side band um, we'll flip the uh, PTT to marks and see what the uh, meter does I got it in IC oh yeah she's drawing some current now let me turn that down all right, then we'll go back and we'll and we'll go back and crank it up. It should be on about the third bar, right there. Now let's see if we get a tune-up on it. We'll put it in tune, we'll flip the uh, marks. Oh yeah. That's the pre-selector. Load. Plate. I'll turn the carrier up. That is about 110 watts. The upper side band test one two oh, need some audio test one two audio check radio check one two three four five audio audio she's a transmitting guys so you know when these two caps went out last time it shorted and it put a lot of current through this bias resistor and blow it and that's all it took to fix it Drum, good weekend, okay. I will 73 and hope you have good force uh, one Bravo zero Mike Papa Victor to our all right guys our 101 EE is running like a charm now we got the little bugs out of it and I'm not seeing any other issues in this thing whatsoever it just seems to be uh, working like a charm and uh, I've got my favorite microphone to use with it so I'm gonna keep this thing here on this bench for a while and uh, do some talking on it and uh, testing it out
and see how it does and see if there's anything you know pops up now uh, we need to go through the uh, digital display there's some capacitors in it they're going to need replacing again you know got to think about how old this thing is it's uh, it's been around for a while we also need to break into the uh, VFO do some cleaning and lubricating it seems to work fine uh, if I switch it over to external yeah, it, the VFO works good I do know that the uh, when you're tuning the capacitor it's a little bit stiff it's not free you know like the uh, the radio it is a little stiff and there's probably some old grease in that drive needs to be cleaned out uh, as far as the speaker uh, landliner ain't nothing really needs to be done to it we'll never use the uh, controls and stuff on the front of it because you know we just don't do telephone phone uh, phone patch anymore but I did notice that the monitor scope um, it has a couple of issues with it I'll see if I can show you this a little bit better as you can see right now the uh, trace is sitting at an angle and if you look up here I got the power on but there's no red light but uh, yeah and now it's on just by tapping it so there's a loose connection in that and uh, sometimes you turn it off and turn it back on this thing will go to working fine uh, but right now it's it's uh, it's showing the error that I wanted you to see and you can see there it is working like it's supposed to now took a few minutes but uh, it finally went out of that mode that it was in but you can see I've got it hooked to the IF of the radio yep so it looks like we're gonna have to get into the scope then and uh, put your capacitors in that thing and clean all the controls and switches and that should take care of that and this station will be up and going without any issues whatsoever all right guys so i got to get the editing on this video and uh, it's broken up in many parts and uh, some of the beginning stuff is recorded after everything else was done and uh, i've already been going to make a video on some of the stuff like the uh, capacitor replacement and i was going to add the uh transmitted repair to the first video decided to split it up so yeah I got a lot of details and editing anyway guys I hope you enjoyed this series on your two part series on the radio like I say we'll get to the other pieces and uh, get them checked out so guys take care if you would uh, you know leave your comments down below hit that like and if you haven't subscribed please do that really helps us alright guys we'll catch you in the next video bye now